Hey everyone, Bob Kendall here. Just want to thank you all for watching my videos. If you do want to support the channel, go to www.kendallreport.com slash wavetech. Sign up for our software. You get market grid on 165 individual stocks and indices. You also will get 16,500 buy and sell signals on our entire database. I thank you so much for supporting the channel. Those of you who have already signed up, thank you so much. Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 41 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. In yesterday's action, we saw the NASDAQ take off and trade up over 2% for most of the session. We, the S&P was up about half that much and the Russell was flat. So we saw that spread that I talked a lot about last night reverse to a large degree. When I was doing my research tonight, I had a flashback to June, and I remember a number of 3180 was a big pivot number. It's very similar to the number that we're looking at right now at the 3576 on the futures and the 3188 level on the cash. We saw the markets trade up near those levels today, and there was a lot of resistance. Overnight, we've seen some pretty decent selling. The futures were down almost 30 handles on the S&P, and they've rebounded a bit right now, but there's definitely a lot of pressure around this number. A lot of uncertainty is still flowing around the so-called vaccine fix. It seems to be coming more bogus by the day, and especially if you look at some of the vaccine stocks, you'll see this start to play out pretty well. So I don't know exactly what's going on here, but there's definitely some sellers up here and still plenty of resistance. So I don't expect that we're going to see the breakout today. It looked like the way we were trading coming into the close yesterday, we might see this thing start to break out. I don't see that happening today. It looks like another day or two of consolidation. This week in general may just be the starting of a consolidation that lasts for at least five to eight trading sessions. We saw the big spike on Monday up to 36.45. It's been nothing but chop since that moment happened. As we come into Thursday's action, we do have the continuing claims and the claims numbers coming out. Claims are expected to show about 750,000 new claims. And last week we had the 7.2 million continuing claims. I still expect to see this number to come down below 7 million. And depending on how much it comes under that number, if it does, this will set the tone for a slightly bullish session. But as we're looking right now, it looks like more consolidation is in play rather than a follow through from yesterday's strength. The other thing that is coming today is 226 earnings reports. There's about five or six that matter. We've got Disney, Cisco, AMAT, and several others that are in the large cap area. The rest are insignificant for the most part. I don't expect to see a lot come out of the earnings reports today. It's fairly concentrated in a few issues as far as the importance of these things. My expectation for today is a consolidation, maybe some downside as we continue to look for the setup that is likely to move this market higher. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts, see what they're telling us for Thursday. As I review the WaveTech database, we did continue to see some new buy signals, about 800 new buy signals, 120 sell signals. So we have another bullish ratio. We've now pushed the percent bullish up to 60.94. I talked about this last night that the next level will be right at the 62 level. This is encouraging, suggesting that we're seeing further positive rotation within the database which will ultimately lead to higher prices in the pattern. As I mentioned in the opening commentary, I do expect to see today be a down day and a possibility of further consolidation this week before we start to see prices move out. I'll go through all the details here in the technicals on the S&P. We continue to see the database rotate in a positive mode. This confirms that we're likely to see higher prices move as we go forward over the next several weeks.
As we take a look at the S&P 500 futures, we see they're down 0.66 on the session, down 23 handles, trading at the 35.44 level. We actually traded up right after the close yesterday. We saw a bid come into the futures, pushing them up to 35.74.50, but we've been fading all night and we're trading near the lows of the session. 35.38 is the low, 35.44 last trade. As we look at the market grid for the futures today, S1 is 3547. We've actually we've traded through that level. S2 is 3525. It's likely we could continue down to that level, but the way the market's been trading for the last couple hours, it looks like we may have set up a low in between that S1 S2. On the upside, 358825 is R1. So it looks to me that at best we'll have an R1 S2 session today. And as I mentioned in the opening comments, I think we'll see further consolidation. You'll notice the pattern that's unfolding on the daily is staying within the grid, and it's absolutely seeing some of the robustness that we saw yesterday start to fade. We still have a positive 0.71 on PPM1. PPM2 is basically flat. PPM3 is up. But we are above all the first and second derivatives on all of the PPMs, including PPM 200. So this continues to be a positive pattern, but we're in this hesitation after the spike that we saw on Monday. Reviewing the cash S&P, we can see that the market basically has, has a different configuration on the cash versus the futures, primarily because of the nearly 24-hour trading cycle in the futures. But we are seeing a pattern is still up sloping in the cash. Now, as we look at the market grid for today, 35.44 is going to be S2. That is likely to be tested based on how the futures are trading right now. But S1, S2 will be the support range for today. 35.85.88 is R1, and that's right at that 35.88 pivot number that I mentioned in the commentary, which I've been talking about for the last couple sessions. So on the futures, it's 35.76, a close above that level. The signal breakout on the cash, it's 35.88. So we are going to have quite a bit of resistance if we trade up there. So as in the futures, looking for probably an R1, S2 pattern today. The S2 is basically where we're trading right now. If we do come in weaker, that is going to be the low of the session. So expect to see this thing grind out. The positive here is that PPM1 is at a 0.88. It will downtick on the open tomorrow. PPM2 is not quite broken out, but three PPM3 and the PPM200 is actually demonstrating, just as in the futures, that there's an uptrend. Plus, you'll notice that the market grid is up sloping. This pattern is a positive pattern will continue into Friday. I'll go through in tomorrow night's video all the details on how the week has to end. As we review the daily NASDAQ futures, we're seeing some down ticks in the PPMs. This does not have as strong as profile that there is in the S&P. We continue to see it lag just a little bit, as it should, based upon the leadership change that I spent a lot of time talking about in yesterday's video. And also, I went through on the live stream today about a 35-minute breakdown of this. So if you didn't see the live stream, go back and watch that. There was there was a lot of detail that I covered in that first 30 minutes of the live stream today that breaks down exactly what I believe is happening across the board on the spreads, NASDAQ versus all the other markets right now. This pattern continues to be positive, but most likely we're going to see just a sideways chop in here. Don't see any breakouts, as I mentioned in the opening comments. I think the best case for this will be R1 is 11,991. Right now, the low has been 11,781, which is right at S1. So we could see an S1. R1 number could print down a little lower down to the S2 number like in the S&P. But the 11,991. 
91 level. We'll call it 11,990. I mentioned this in yesterday's live stream as well. This is a critical level on the NASDAQ. If we do close above that level, then that's going to signal that we will go back above 12,000 and move toward 12,300, 12,600, which will push us up toward a higher end on the market grid on a weekly basis. But for today, continue to expect to see S1, R1 possibly expanding to an S2 down to the downside just a little bit, which will put us right at the 10 peri moving average, which has a PPM level of 0.44, suggesting there's only a 30% probability to decline under 11,663. So that'll certainly be a point you want to trade off of today. Next market I'll cover is the Russell 2000. We did see the Russell flatten out yesterday. The PPMs are illustrating a very strong move. We could see another day of consolidation. All of these indexes are going to act similar in today's action. The underlying strength in the Russell, about three times as strong as even the S&P. We're looking at PPM1 at a 1.20. This is very strong. All of these are likely to, likely to down tick a little bit, but anything over 0.8 is very robust. And what we're going to see over the next couple of days is the 10 period moving average just rocket up underneath here coming into that low 1600 level in the next two sessions. So expect to see this market trade in a sideways range, setting up a pattern that will lead us to higher prices most likely early next week, could happen on Friday. But this will be your leader going forward going to that rotation that I spent a lot of time talking about in last night's video as well as the live stream today. The final market that I will cover tonight is gold. Gold continues to be in this very flat sideways range right along the support line at the 1850 level. We've seen the print down to 1853 Yesterday, the low so far overnight tonight has been 1860, and on Monday, the big sell off was 1848. I continue to expect to see gold consolidate here and move back toward these moving averages between that 1905 and 1908 levels. PPM1 has turned up, as I told you it would probably do in yesterday's video. That is starting to happen. PPM3 is trying to turn up. We still need further price movement toward this 1900 level to get this thing going. So as we look at the market grid for today, expect to see it move above R1, look for at least an R2 number, 1891, S1, 1847, the overnight lows, 1860. We're probably not going to see anywhere near an S1. Look for the lows to be established above that 1850 level and ultimately move back toward 1891 to the 1906 level, which is in the grid for today. This will complete the video for tonight. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.